Good afternoon. My name is Safi Berry. I work for the Israeli police. Um, first of all, I would like to thank uh, the conference for allowing me to come and sp uh, to speak about uh, DASK. This presentation is an outcome of the work of the di uh, science da uh, data team in uh, the intelligence department. And the aim of the presentation is to highlight some uh, pitfalls, gotchas, when transferring your code from Pandas to DASK. Uh, the notebook is available on GitHub or on the conference website. So the, this is going to be our agenda. I'm going to start with a short introduction of, of DASK and then uh, go into details uh, specifically about DataFrame. Out of curiosity, how many people here have, are working with DASK? Good, so we're just under half, I think. So I hope I'll be able to give some in, insights. So DASK is a... The dynamic computation parallels, uh, parallel framework for in uh, Python. It has many aspects and very many uh, topics that, that DASK deals with in par when dealing with parallelization. We're going to concentrate on the collections of uh, data frames. And in a nutshell, uh, DASK comes and wraps Pandas data frame uh, and runs computation on each partition of it, uh, that is, uh, which is a, literally a pandas data frame, and we'll show that later on. So why would we want to do something like that? If our data is big data and doesn't fit into a memory of a data frame, of a pandas data frame, then Dask is to the rescue. Once we have transferred our code into Dask, then we're able to scale from a laptop up to thousands of nodes seamlessly. Uh, we currently run on a, a Yarn cluster. And if you're familiar with Pandas, then the, you can, you'll see later on that this code is very similar or literally identical in many uh, scripts. And you get some bonuses, such as a dashboard, and we'll see that. So in order to start to work with DAS data frames, we need to generate a client, and client manages the schedulers and the workers that are running the computation. And we're going to run um, on DAS 1.2 and Pandas uh, 0.24. And once we have uh, loaded the, the data, the libraries, we're going to run a client. If we if we don't give any specifications to the client, it will identify that we're running locally. And doing so, we will see that we uh, are running, we, it, it, it identifies the cluster, which is my current uh, laptop. And we uh, also get this dashboard that will be able to uh, monitor our uh, computations as we go along. Uh, we'll very uh, we'll dive into much of the dashboard, but we'll still see it. And here we have some screenshots displaying how a DAS dashboard looks, and it gives you statuses of the various tasks that are running. And it, in order to run in parallel, DAS generates this DAG, and you'll, we will be able, and you have visibility about, uh, you have visibility visibility to the DAG and the processes that are running and where it's running within this DAG. So my first tip is when running uh, a client, run within a context manager. It, if you, and normally when running within a, a Jupyter, that's not an issue, but when you run a script, if you don't do so, you'll have your resources, will, your client will be hanging and you'll lose resources and then things will unexpectedly will happen. So now we're diving into the data frame, and in order to generate a data frame, we are uh, going to use a sample that comes within Dask. And as you can see, Dask is lazy. And once we call the ob object that we uh, just generated, we, we don't see the data itself. We see the columns, we see the types, but the data itself is not available. Only when we run compute or head, we'll see that DAS runs the computation itself and calls 
to generate the data. So, once we have the data, uh, now that we have a DAS data frame, let's generate a Pandas data frame for comparison. So, the outcome of a DAS data uh, compute is a Pandas data frame, and as you can see, now we have a PDF that it, that's going to be a Pandas data frame, and we're going to use these two data frames for comparison. We can generate a DAS data frame from a Pandas data frame using the from Pandas method. As you can see, we'll get a lazy, or back, uh, lazy object back, and uh, we have here, uh, but we need to remember to supply uh, an M-partition uh, keyword or a chunk size keyword that will tell Dask how to split up the, the Pandas data frame in the computations. Let's dive into these, this uh, partition. To do so, we're going to just run a reset index on the Pandas data frame. And when we use the lock method, we could see that we're calling the first row and we get one value out one row out. Doing so on a DAS data frame, we will see that we won't get one, but rather we got 10. Why did we get 10? Because we told DAS to generate the panda, uh, our data frame from n partitions. We would change that to 30, to 100, we will get 100 rows or whatever we stated in the n partitions. Okay, just looking at a shape, we're looking at the shape, we, once again in Pandas we get the entire uh, shape of the data frame. Remember, Pandas uh, keeps the entire data frame in memory, but uh, Dask doesn't. And in order to get this, the shape of the, uh, of the data frame, the Dask data frame, we need to run the, uh, the len length, uh, method and then we will get the length. So this is why uh, another um, issue when wanting to understand what data we are w working with and what is the size of the data frame. So now once we have the data frames that we're going to use in this uh, session, we need to work, when we're working with Dask, we need to have a shift that we're not using any more uh, in place equals true we're just doing insert and updates, uh, and uh, deletes, no updates. Um, and so we could, could be used to updating the rename with in place uh, equal true in a, on a pandas data frame. And this is uh, applicable to any uh, method that uses in place. Doing so in Dask would cause an error. So what do we do? We are explicit, we assign the method which is right, uh, also uh, valid in uh, Pandas. You could argue that even that's best, better practice. And as you can see, say, this would be the same both in Dask and in Pandas. Let's uh, update some data. You could do so in uh, with Pandas using the lock. Um, and doing so in Pandas, in, da in Dask, will cause an error. And if you recall why, since it's possible, like we saw before, and that on the, those indexes, on, those, uh, on the lock, you get multiple results. So that could cause a problem. Uh, instead of that, use the where or the mask method, which is valid both in Pandas and in Dask. And you could see that literally the same code and uh, uh, you update the data accordingly. One uh, feature that uh, Dask introduces is the meta argument. Meta comes, uh, enables to update uh, or allow Dask to generate the DAG in order to uh, understand what are the future co computations are going to be. And I'll give an example is when running apply, uh, here we're just taking out the two, uh, uh, the two strings from the, word, uh, from the name column. Doing so in DAS will generate a warning. And this warning tells us that DAS is not sure, but it will try to infer through the data what the results are, what, what are the results. 
but you should assign the, you should give in the meta uh, keyword in order to allow DAS to generate, to understand explicitly what is going to be the outcome of the computation. So once we, uh, once we supply the meta argument to Dask, uh, to, the, uh, to the apply function, Dask runs the, the, the code without any uh, warnings. We could uh, do it on the functions and we could be less explicit with the meta. We could just tell it what type it's going to return and here we're just telling it it's a float and uh, Dask runs without any warning. And lastly, regarding this issue, is the map partition method. If we have some sort of uh, custom function that is a bit more complex, or brings data from outside, then uh, map partitions allows us to run the function on each partition, which is a separate data frame, separately. And then uh, this is especially uh, important when we want to run uh, date, uh, functions that are not pure NumPy or SciPy uh, functions or methods. Um, and here we're doing something a bit more complex, we generate some uh, 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 the distance between two adjacent points, dropping some columns, and the result here is not a series but rather a data frame. So here's another example how we could use, if we have a, a more complex code, we could run it in a more, in a uh, we could use Dask even for uh, uh, these kind of computations. Uh, so not uh, what we, everything that we have in Pandas is implemented in Dask, but this is a, a, a way to work with whatever uh, code we need to. Okay, another, uh, these are kind of another small example, uh, running, uh, running, with, uh, in order to generate the time. In Pandas, we could directly run on the uh, t uh, run time on what's resulted from a uh, two-day time. Uh, doing so in Dask would cause a problem, so you have to work around. So we do it as type, and then uh, run DT type, and uh, then we would get the results um, in a sec. So sometimes, it depends on, on the clustering, the cluster, you could have an overhead of, for the computation, uh, and this is an example. Running on the drop, you could see exactly the same. I'm, what I'm, I'm showing here that we, if you want to assign a, uh, a column, it's exactly the same. Uh, and now, if you want to actually drop uh, an A column in Pandas, since everything is in memory, we could directly say drop an A and uh, drop the column. In Dask, that is not available because it doesn't know if all the data is an A. We have to, it must check, first of all, that the, that the entire column is empty or with uh, none, and then only then we will pass the drop. So these are kind of workarounds that we could work with in order to uh, get the, uh, run the required uh, results that we want. Okay, so we've manipulated some data. Now we want to write, read and write some data. Obviously, we would prefer working with Parquet, but we don't always have that. So um, we, we're going to, uh, I'll show in this example about writing and reading CSV. Uh, we could save files. Um, in Pandas, is a single file, and it will take a few seconds here, I don't know, 30 seconds to run. And then uh, we will get one single file. I won't wait, and we'll come back to this in a second. In DAS, doing so, we, we could generate and it will run multiple files. Now that it took us 25 seconds to write this data frame to disk, uh, doing so on uh, DAS, you could see it's running in parallel. Write the data frame onto disk, less time, as you could see. And since we had 30 partitions in the, this data frame, we have a list of 30 files that were generated. Reading files, so once again, Pandas is going to read everything. It needs to take each separate file and concatenate them uh, into one big data frame. 
It took around six seconds. When running within Dask, this is, I'm cheating here because obviously it's still lazy, so it will take a, a few seconds. And now you could see that it will take, I don't know, three, say four seconds. So it's slightly quicker, but if we call it, if we don't run the length, it's lazy. So it just generated the, the graph and didn't run anything until we uh, ran the length method. Uh, using the persist, uh, whenever, since we're running on, uh, could run multiple uh, computations, so Dask generates DAGs and app updates the DAG accordingly. So in order to, uh, the good practice is when you read it something, do some filtering, you persist the data, do a, a few more things, persist, and that's how you move on. Um, but as you could see, once it's persist, I called the head data once again, I'll do it again, I don't really have time, but you see that it's not calling anything, it's automatically returning the results in comparison of starting to read or compute the entire DAG from the beginning. Lastly, I want to talk about, or nearly lastly, this is a bit advanced topic about the group by. In this example, we're doing a custom group by where I want to take the uh, group by name and list the ID and the seconds uh, into a list. So doing so in Pandas, we can we have a two list function that we could enter the lambda that we could use the apply, and it took us just under two seconds, and this is the desired result. Um, doing so in Dask will take considerably more time, and you could see that actually it needs to run, and I'm just uh, and run this group by between all the partitions that are generated to aggregate the data and then bring them together. It's kind of a map produce problem uh, and it takes whatever time it takes and it's considerably more than time that we had in Pandas. Uh, but Das comes to the rescue with some additional tools that we could use and this is, uh, it's an object called Das data frame aggregation and once we, I won't go into details of how you uh, build this object, but once we do, you could see that it cleared up the, DAG, uh, the graph and ran 10 times as fast. Lastly, debugging. Debugging when working with uh, parallel computing is, could be uh, problematic. Um, so my first advice is you have some bugs, right? you could run the task without a client and then it's more uh, sequential and you, you could spot uh, bugs if required. You could use the dashboard, and there's a, I, I can't go into it, but there's a profiler that elaborates uh, the various uh, statuses of the t task and how what task is generated, taking more time. And last thing is just be aware of the, uh, to verify the integrity of the, da of the DAG. And I'll explain what I mean by that. Um, it, I'm gonna start with a fresh data frame. And this data, um, I, ran a, I ran a function, I read a function here, and uh, I signed, I, I used the map partition, very similar than what we had beforehand. Um, and now I'm going to call the head on this table, on this data frame, and I got an error. Why did I get the error? Because instead of using asterisks, asterisk, I used a caret. Okay, so I will say, let me, I'll, uh, using the same data frame, I'm going to update the function and run it again. Still doesn't work. The Dask remembers the, the computation that I fed to the DAG, and in order to run the uh, computation, I have to kind of refresh the, 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 data, the DAG and reset it. So only once I reset it, I'm able to um, uh, run the computation. Uh, so many times, once you kind of stuck, especially if you update your same, the same object, then you need to reset uh, your DAG in order to um, run the computation. So in summary, I, I think you could see that uh, Dask and Pandas are very similar, uh, especially if you uh, want to do some parallel computing and you're not, you're not coming from uh, Spark, so this is a very valid uh, option. Uh, Dask is lazy and efficient, and sometimes that could be a bit, uh, uh, you have to rem remember that and understand uh, the various 
uh, issues that can arise from that. It doesn't have all, uh, although it's similar to Pandas, it doesn't have all the, the functions that Pandas has. And you have the documentation as well, although it's, it, the DAS documentation is, it, take, it takes or it reads in a lot of the Pandas documentation, it's not always update. Although it says that there is something in, in the documentation, it doesn't, it don't, it doesn't always work. Uh, and remember the issue of the corrupted DAG. Uh, but once you have overcome that, you're flexible with your client and the environment, and you get the uh, dashboard and other goodies that DAS is continually being developed and uh, that can be used in your uh, computations. So that's it.